Hi everyone, this is one of those recipes you make when you don't really have any groceries with you. Only a few of these ingredients are actually perishable. You see I have leftover fried rice in the bottom left there. That chicken I pulled out of the freezer. Um, there's vegetables up in the top left. Those leeks and green onions, yes those are perishable but they last forever in the fridge. That head of broccoli is just leftover from some other recipe that I had and I'm just going to complement it with some frozen vegetables that I have had forever in the freezer that's just like a backup. I'm going to throw together a fried rice recipe with that soy sauce, olive oil, rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, crushed red pepper, black pepper. I'm going to throw some salt in there as well and chop up some of that garlic and ginger. That never really goes bad. And this is just going to be a recipe you throw together to um, hold you over until you can go grocery shopping again. You should include any veggies you have left in your fridge here that you're trying to get rid of. So I'm gonna chop everything up first. These are leeks. I think these are literally left over from like Thanksgiving. They lasted weeks in the fridge. <laughs> leeks, weeks. Um, I'm just slicing them down the center like this and I'm gonna chop them up just like you see here. Leeks are by no means like an authentic recipe, ingredient I mean, in fried rice. I just, I had it. So I'm trying to get rid of it and it's gonna work fine. Trust me. Nothing I really post on this page is authentic in any sort of way. I'm not trying to be the next like Gordon Ramsay here or like fancy chef. I'm just trying to teach you how to build a recipe, build something from nothing and also not offend anyone who thinks that I'm trying to make this authentic. Okay, so I chopped that up, high speed there. I'm putting it to the side and I'm just putting it in a bowl while I chop up the next vegetable. that had a broccoli that I had. So I'm just cutting off the stem part of the broccoli and I'm just like literally rough chopping this. You can tell that this broccoli is a little bit on its last leg, I'll say, because it's pretty dry and it's kind of shedding those little buds at the end. It's all fine, it's all good. It's gonna taste just fine because it's gonna get hydrated in the oil. It, it's gonna taste totally fine. So I'm just giving these a rough chop with absolutely no regard for shape. I do have a regard for size though, I should mention that. When you saw that I cut up those leeks, the reason I cut it in that shape is because I know that I have that bag of frozen veggies that I'm gonna put in here in a minute and I'm not changing the shape of those. So you want the foods in, the ingredients in the dish to be of roughly the same size so that they can fit on the fork because the more you can fit, the more different things you can fit on the fork, the better the bite's gonna be. And you thought I was about to throw those broccoli stems out? No, I've been freezing those, dude. Um, I cut them up, put them in a Ziploc bag in the freezer and put some other things in the bag too, and I save it to make either a chicken stock or a veggie stock. It's perfectly zero waste. And honestly, it's kind of just fun to make. So I'm gonna chop up that garlic, Ooh, almost lost one garlic and ginger next. So for those who don't know how to just like peel garlic, give it a little slap on the side with the heel of your hand and the skin will peel right off. Um, basically the skin gets, when you agitate it like that, it kind of, um, it repels from the actual like head of garlic, clove I should say. Okay, taking off the skins there throwing them in the garbage can that you can't see. And once I do that, I will chop up the ginger at the same time. But quick note on ginger that you'll see me grab in just a second. Um, it's like impossible to peel or it's very daunting. So you'll see me grab a spoon and I just have this head of ginger. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit. Boom. And you could just like slice around this skin, like literally cut it off. But if you actually just go ham with a spoon like this, it comes right off or the majority of it comes off. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not gonna die if you eat a little bit of ginger skin, but it's all fine. So I'm just kind of working it. And you thought I was gonna throw that out. No, I actually saved some of it and put it in that bag of broccoli into the freezer. It's gonna make my stock that I make in a few weeks taste amazing. Okay. The fun thing about garlic and ginger is the flavor does not really come from cooking it. 
The flavor of garlic and ginger comes from the size at which you chop it. So the finer you chop it, the more flavorful it will be. So if you mince it like we're going to do, you're going to get a lot of flavor from it. You could even like grate it over if you have like one of those fine graters and you don't have to cook it all. You could put it like directly over food, like a salad or something, and it'll taste amazing. But I'm just kind of going in with my knife. Speed that up for you. Okay. Um, this green onion is going to go at the very, very end of the fried rice. It's going to go on top. It's nice to like have a fresh herb to mix on top of your dish because it creates like a brightness and a freshness to the dish because you've been cooking it on the stove and that kind of like darkens flavors. So by adding like a fresh herb or fresh ingredient at the end, it like, it really brings it to life. It like brings all the other flavors out and completes the dish. Okay. The last thing I'm going to chop, you saw me switch out the cutting boards because um, I'm not trying to contaminate my other cutting board with raw chicken, but I'm just slicing this chicken up. And if you remember what I said a few minutes ago about size, <clears throat> so I'm slicing this chicken up and I want it to be like kind of the same size as the veggies, like the broccoli. So I'm cutting it in little strips here and then I'll um, cube it the other way in just a second. But this is actually easy to do if the chicken is still frozen. So if you happen to know you're gonna make this dish and you wanna cut your chicken, like cube it while it's frozen, you are better than I because I don't have that much foresight. I should have actually cut these a little bit smaller. I do wish I cut them smaller um, because they were a little bit large compar in comparison to like the broccoli and the other veggies that I'm gonna put in. But okay, zoom in through here, just, this is not that important. You don't have to take the fat off either. Um, the fat tastes really good and you won't it doesn't, you won't get like a chewy texture. Some people think you're gonna like, it, it's not like a prime rib. Um, it's gonna just like kind of melt into the meat. Okay, that pan was already relatively hot. I think I'm on like a medium, medium high heat here. Uh, I just put a splash of olive oil in to kind of cover the bottom and you can see that the oil heats up pretty fast. So now I'm putting in that chicken. If you remember this from my sausage, peppers and onions recipe, the order of this goes meat, cook the meat first, then remove the meat and cook the veggies in the same pan that you cooked the meat. The idea being when you cook the meat, you leave behind some like drippings in the pan that are kind of like quote unquote burnt onto the pan. People tend to freak out and be like, oh my God, I burned the food. No, you didn't burn the food. That's flavor. Color is flavor. Rachel Ray taught me that. The color on the bottom of the pan is flavor. So I'm just uh, cooking this plain because the flavor is actually, um, we're going to season this dish from like the soy sauce, um, sesame oil, stuff like that at the end. And because the chicken's so small, it's going to kind of really absorb that sauce really well but I'm removing the chicken, just like I said I would, remove the meat, and then I'm gonna put the veggies right in this pan with what's left of that oil, and a little bit of like the chicken juices are gonna seep out into the pan. Um, some of it's water, but some of it's like actual like chicken flavor. That's gonna go great with, it's gonna go great to cook the veggies in because it's gonna kind of marry the chicken with the veggies, and it's going to create like like a, f a dish that goes together instead of random ingredients that you just threw in a dish. I hope that makes sense, even though I know it doesn't. Okay, so putting in the broccoli and the leeks here, right in the pan, Didn't I didn't even add in any more oil. I'm just gonna kind of let these sit here, absorb some of those juices and oil on the bottom of the pan. And the reason I put these in first is because I want these to get a little soft because these aren't cooked yet. Um, the other, the frozen veggies are already cooked. They're just frozen. So all I need to do is heat those up. So I'm going to add them in later. And okay, something very important to understand here is I just put frozen veggies that are frozen. They are cold into a relatively warm pan with warm broccoli and leeks in there. 
the temperature of the pan is going to drastically decrease when you put in a frozen vegetable. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to come back to the temperature that I wanna actually eat this dish at. So that's why I put this in fast forward. I season with a little bit of salt, pepper, and crushed red pepper in here. Okay, so now you can see everything is soft, everything is warm. Okay, so pushing it to the side of my pan here. This is why it's nice to use like a really big pan. If you have a wok, use that. I do not have a wok. And I'm going to add the ginger and garlic in. The reason I didn't add it at the beginning, you probably could have, but I didn't want to burn it because they will burn if they cook for too long. So I'm adding a, wow, great placement. You definitely cannot see that, but it is there. All the garlic and ginger is there. I'm just letting this sweat in the pan for just a few seconds, like 20 seconds or so before I mix it all in because it's gonna make it super fragrant. And I don't want like hard pieces of garlic or ginger that if I mix it right in right away, it might not cook fully or it might be like, um, it might still be hard instead of what I want, which is soft. Okay, so just mixing it around a little bit. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. So yeah, you can see those veggies are ready to go. Like they are the right texture, they're fully cooked and they're nice and warm. Just making sure that ginger and garlic kind of seize the pan. It's not just sitting on top of itself. And there we go, now we can mix it in. So we're starting to get the flavor of the ginger and the garlic into the veggies, exactly what we want. And boom, I think I added a little bit of black pepper right there. Now this recipe is essentially foolproof. You are just throwing in all ingredients. You're just adding them. So I'm adding leftover rice and taking out some of my anger management into the rice, just chopping it up. This is why it's nice to use like leftover rice because it's not as wet and you can kind of like chop it like this a little bit. Um, it's gonna look clumpy and it will for like most of this video. Toward the end, it gets warm enough to the point where it separates from itself a little bit, but it's all fine, it, it's all good. Okay, mix, 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 chopping it up. Okay, mixing, mixing, mixing. Okay, and here comes the chicken. Okay, so do you see how I, I said it? Like the chicken was like a little bit too big. I should have cut it a little smaller. It's okay, lesson learned. Dish is gonna taste great. Okay, right now that chicken is bland. There's really nothing on it. I know you're probably like skeeving out. That chicken is gross, but that's why I cut it this size because I knew that when I added the sauces later, all the surface area on that chicken, because it's so small, it's gonna absorb really, quickly. I'm not going to need to season it super heavily. Soy sauce. Okay. I know you can't see it, but that is soy sauce. How much? I'm not sure. Enough to where it's going to be able to kind of penetrate through all the rice and all the chicken, but not enough to the point where you're like swimming in it. But do remember that this, like the soy sauce is the most abundant liquid in this. So if you don't add enough, like you're not going to be able to make up for it with the other liquids. That other thing you saw me drizzle in there was rice wine vinegar, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way with vinegars, like those acids. It's gonna help bring out the flavor, the rest of the flavors in this dish. And then one thing I did not have laying on the table that I know I needed is just a dash of sugar. That's what you just saw me put in there because I need to kind of counteract that acid with some sort of sugar and the salty flavors, uh, the umami salty flavors from the soy sauce. You saw me put in some sriracha, that's just for spice. And there's a little bit of sugar in sriracha but some spice, some heat, and I'm mixing it in. You can see that I'm gonna spend a little bit of time doing this because um, I need to make sure kind of like all that rice gets covered and all the chicken as well. I'm just on a like relatively low heat here. I'm not on the same heat that I was cooking the whole pan in, the whole dish in, because I'm not trying to cook still. I'm just trying to like marry the flavors and all the ingredients that I'm putting into this right now don't need to be further cooked. Okay, so I'm spending some time doing this because this is important. I don't wanna have like a bite where like there's no flavor and then one where I'm dying because I just ate a tablespoon of sriracha. Okay, look at that. You can see the colors coming together. Look at that nice, this is beautiful. Wow, I didn't realize it came out so good. Okay, this is what we're looking like at the end. I took it off the heat. It's on a little um, rubber mat, so I'm not burning my countertop. But 
Look at the color. Look at all those colors. Colors are flavor. Colors are healthy. Colors are nutritious. So what I'm doing here at the end, I'm just going to chop up, sorry, not chop up, grab my chopped up green onions, sprinkle them on top. When you add a nice Green onion on top. Oh, look at the presentation. We eat with our eyes. Remember that? Eat with our eyes. Okay, look at this. I just freelanced this whole recipe. Freelance in the kitchen. If you know, you know. She is beauty. She is grace. I am topping her off with just a little bit of toasted sesame oil. Not a lot. You don't want it to be oily. Like and sub for more freelance in the kitchen videos.